So I'd like to present a report of the NACA webinar status on the use of Artemia cysts in fish and crustacean hatcheries around the world, which was held on the 2nd of September. The main aim of this webinar was to review the differences in practices with Artemia cyst hatching and use as food in commercial hatcheries. The webinar considered both large and small hatcheries from different countries in Asia, Europe and Latin America, which were producing a variety of species, including Pinaid shrimp, Macrobrachium prawn, mud crab, European sea bass, and sea bream. I will not be able to go into much detail, but please refer to the NACA YouTube channel where you can find the recordings of all the presentations. So we were interested to see if the techniques that were recommended in the Artemia handbooks and manuals published in the 1980s and 1990s are still practiced to ensure the optimal use of this costly resource particularly at a time when there are many different Artemia sources in the market from the historically important Great Salt Lake in Utah, but also more recently from many other Artemia sites in Central Asia and coastal China. Hatching Artemia cysts is a simple procedure. After 24 hours of incubation in seawater, the nauplii hatch from the cysts, but when conducted with in kilogram quantities in commercial hatcheries, there are many aspects in this hatching process that should be optimized to give the best results. Let's have a look at some of the many examples that were presented in the workshop. Culture systems around the world range from small conical tanks of a few hundred liters up to the large concrete tanks as seen here in Chinese hatcheries of five to 10 cubic meters in volume. We notice different conditions of illumination of the water surface in the tanks, which is a very important parameter to, parameter to ensure maximum and synchronous hatching. Many facilities operate without temperature control, resulting in fluctuations of several degrees Celsius between the seasons, which has an impact on the instar stage at harvest, as most of the time the same 24 hour incubation period is practiced throughout the year. This means that during the hottest season of the year, one is mainly harvesting instar 2 nauplii that are contaminated with Vibrio bacteria. This represents a loss of 10 to 20% in nutritional and commercial value over instar 1 and introduces significant biosecurity risks. Here are two examples of top class Artemia rooms. To the left is a marine fish hatchery in the Mediterranean and to the right a shrimp hatchery in Vietnam where conditions are strictly controlled and where large quantities of cysts are hatched out on a daily basis. Today, some of the largest shrimp hatcheries in the world process up to 100 kilograms of Artemia cysts on a daily basis. Prior to hatching and incubation, different techniques are practiced for cyst disinfection, for example, with hypochlorite or hydrogen peroxide. Some hatcheries are still applying the cyst decapsulation technique with hypochlorite at high pH. While this does indeed disinfect the cysts and facilitates the later harvesting of the nauplii, it is not an environmentally friendly or healthy process. In the top row we can see a few more Artemia rooms. Underneath are examples of common methods for used for harvesting the nauplii and separating these from the remaining cysts. Some apply double screen separation and very often the nets are not submerged during this harvesting and washing process. These methods cause physical damage to the nauplii, resulting in losses in nutritional value, and the leached contents are a suitable substrate for Vibrio bacteria development. As remarked earlier, this results in further losses in quality and increased biosecurity risks. Separating the last empty cysts and the shells from the free swimming nauplii is not easy. That's why we hear about innovations in Latin America as well as in China with new separation techniques using brine or hydrogen peroxide. Heat killing or freezing the freshly hatched nauplii in order to be able to feed the shrimp at an earlier larval stage is a valid option provided that the quick freezing is performed in thin layers or short heat killing to prevent the rupturing of the thin exoskeleton of the nauplii and the leaching of their body fluids. Again, the same warning as we made earlier, and another example of how one can waste this valuable live food source. The practice of submerging the Artemia in boiling water, as seen on the left, or freezing in large bags, is not recommended. More recently, a very elegant separation method has been developed that takes advantage of the possibility to use magnets to separate unhatched cysts and shells, 
that have been coated with iron during the cyst processing. Small hatcheries are using these popular blue tube separators filled with magnets, and more recently magnetic bar systems have been developed, allowing further automation and intensification of the nuclei harvesting process. Here is a model of an Artemia hatching room that ensures maximum output of the highest quality nuclei, processing 100 kilograms of Artemia cysts on a daily basis in three shifts. As you can see in the black and red time bar, by improving its former protocol and tank setup, this shrimp hatchery in Vietnam can conduct Artemia hatching under optimal conditions for light, pH and temperature. This has resulted in a 30% more efficient use of Artemia and harvesting a more biosecure product, ensuring a maximum percentage of Instar 1 nuclei. In between feeding times, the nuclei are stored at 4 degrees Celsius to slow development. Marine fish hatcheries in Europe were the first to adopt cold storage of Artemia nuclei and now use milk storage tanks as you can see in the picture. The technique of cold storage of Instar 1 nuclei needs to receive much more attention as it allows nuclei to make, be maintained in their most nutrition, nutritious condition following the morning harvest for the rest of the day. It also allows more frequent distribution to the fish or shrimp tanks including through automatic, automatic pumping devices. Vietnamese crab hatcheries made a big breakthrough when they found out that they could replace the Rotifer brachionis, a classic starter food for the zoea stages, with the umbrella stage of the small Artemia cysts produced in the Vin Chau salt ponds in the Mekong Delta. Thanks to this innovation, several hundred crab hatcheries in the Mekong Delta now produce more than a billion crablets. It is interesting to mention here that the the first use of umbrella Artemia in zoa shrimp feeding has also been reported from Vietnamese hatcheries. The production and separation of the umbrella stages during the Artemia cyst hatching process is still a primitive and labour intensive method, but for sure we can expect to see some innovations here. Over the last years, companies have begun to specialise in the production and distribution of live nuclei, particularly to shrimp hatcheries. Their success has had a lot to do with the earlier cited problems of unreliable quality of Artemia nuclei produced under suboptimal production conditions in so many hatcheries. In China, the biggest consumer of Artemia cysts, close to 50% of the shrimp hatcheries rely on the purchase of live Artemia from these nuclei production centres. Finally, we need to mention the growing use of Artemia biomass harvested from production ponds for use in late hatchery and nursery feeding, especially in shrimp farming. China is a leader in this practice where biomass is offered in live, frozen and dried forms. So this brings us to the conclusions of the Naka Artemia webinar, organised on the 2nd of September. In the first place, it's very clear that there is a lot of room for improvement and that it is high time to reconsider good aquaculture product practices for Artemia production and their use in the hatcheries. Hopefully hatchery managers will realise that applying more standardised protocols will not only result in a better and more biosecure food, but that they will be able to save on their Artemia cyst purchases. All efforts need to be made to optimally use Artemia to guarantee that hatcheries deliver top quality product for stocking in the ponds or cages. FAO has therefore decided to prepare an update of the Artemia manual. We also recommend to consider holding regional Artemia training courses for local hatcheries. The use of our umbrella Artemia as successfully applied in the Vietnamese crab hatcheries is an interesting new development that should be considered for wider application in aquaculture as new source of food in the early larval stages, be it for shrimp or fish. In view of the large variety of, the, of species and strains of Artemia that are now available in the market, it might be time to study their specific characteristics so as to identify their most suitable application for specific species of fish and crustaceans. Such could relate to their nutritional composition, synchrony and hatching, or enrichment characteristics. Finally, it might also be worthwhile to reconsider a wider use in hatcheries of the Artemia enrichment technique, as it is now restricted to applications in marine fish and crab production. This method not only allows enhancement of the nutritional value of the nuclei, but can also be used as a vector to deliver, for example, pre or probiotics to the larvae.
Okay, and that's it. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.